Today we're going to step into the world of Framer to quickly and easily create this scroll activated animation. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so the very first thing I want you to do is to take a look at the YouTube description here and grab the link on the Figma community so that you can replicate this file that you see right here. I'm a big proponent of uh, basically following along as a way to really commit this stuff to memory rather than just watching. So just a quick description of what's happening just to let you know there's nothing fancy happening here. I think the most fancy thing that's happening here is this AI generated guitar. Uh, if I zoom up you'll see there's like a little bit of a drop shadow which I've applied over here in effects. Not a big deal. Everything else is as you would expect. So we have uh, a rectangle for this uh, slightly off color background. We have uh, the guitar we have our type that's over here, 04, flagship USA made guitar. And then we just have a button down here, it's inside of a frame, nothing, you know, nothing fancy. Um, this is our design that we wanna go ahead and import into actually Framer. So what you wanna do is come up over here and we wanna do a search for Framer. Oopsie, when I do that, yep. Yeah, we wanna choose Figma uh, to HTML with Framer. So. When we select that, it says select a layer to copy. Well, in our case, we're just going to select everything and then choose it again. There we go. And now it says right there, copied eight layers, paste in Framer. Okay, so at that point, we can now go to Framer. All right, so the first thing we'll do is go ahead and grab this, change the background color to it is D4, I then four zeros and uh, we can go ahead and control V to paste in. All right, and one of the things you'll wanna do is you wanna make sure that it accurately translated your layers. So for instance, this is up too high. I'm just gonna hold shift and drag that down. All right, that's looking good. One thing I wanna do is click over layers so we can get to the layer view. Um, we're gonna take frame two, which is kind of like the overall container. This is, it, this is inside, it was a frame. And we wanna choose over here where it says width, make sure you can see that, we're gonna change that to 100%, uh, not 100%, but 75% or so. All right, and then after that, we take this element, which is the rectangle one, and we change that to 100% of its parent because it's inside of that frame. So we have 75% and then this is 100%. Um, additionally, zero four is inside of that, so let's, let's just move that outside. And then finally, we'll take the guitar itself and we will change this right here so that it is right aligned. So now when we click play, we'll see that it does a pretty good job. We would have to create a break point here and like push the guitar down the middle, but we'll save that for another toot and we will, <laughs> did I say toot? Um, and we will just focus on the scroll interactivity. So I'm gonna take this, we're gonna uh, pull this down. And by the way, the movement of these controls to pan is just you hit the space bar, left click and drag. Uh, you hit control and your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so you can see that I'm use, using these fast. Once you commit this to memory, you can move around and zoom around as much as you want. Okay, so first, in order for this to work, this, uh, this experiment, we need to push this off the view right here because we wanna scroll activated animation here in Fig Figma. So we just wanna make sure it's down far enough so that we don't see it uh, when we initially hit play. And then that way we'll have to come down just to reveal it like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out. And the first thing that we'll do in order to get things kind of set up and, and animating how we want to is I wanna put um, our elements inside of a mask essentially. And so these elements will kind of come out of nowhere. This is a popular front end kind of like motion animation technique. Um, you could achieve it in HTML and CSS and all that good stuff obviously. Uh, and so here's how you do it within Framer. So what we wanna do is hit F and we're gonna create a frame from in Framer and just, just wrap our type like our 04 right here um, and what we could do, if you want both 04 and DC Evo, like you know, Deluxe, to, to fall in, we could just hit frame and we can wrap both of them around, like this. Yeah, we don't need that background, just click uh, the X right there. And then you also wanna make sure the overflow hidden is right here, uh, because this is what requires this effect to work. So we have a frame and then overflow hidden as well. What we wanna do is take our 04 and our DC Evo Deluxe right here. 
and we want to drag that inside of the frame, right just like that. Now, if we were to take the DC Evo and 04 text and move it out, you'll see we can no longer see it because it acts as a mask by setting overflow to hidden. So I'm gonna undo that though. And now with both of them selected, we can just come over here and we can click under effects, the plus sign, and we will choose scroll animation right there. There we go. All right, now with scroll animation selected right here, we wanna do section and view, and that's why we had to define, or we didn't define yet, uh, the actual section. So if we take the section right here, this, this little, this light red, section right there, we're gonna change, we're gonna add a scroll section, and this scroll section, if I move out of the way, is going to be guitar. Okay, after we specify that, we grab our two elements here, we click back on scroll animation, and we wanna change guitar right there. Viewport means kind of um, when this particular section is in view, when should the animation start? So if you have any understanding of Greenstock Animation Platform's um, scroll trigger and your start and end properties, or values rather, uh, you'll know that I, this kind of does the same thing. It just helps you control the timing of when these animations start. So you can experiment with all three of these. I'm just gonna put this in the middle. Um, for replay, we could just hit yes, and you'll see what that does. It could, it'll replay the animation based on scroll position or not. Um, and for our preset, we're just gonna say slide in top, all right? So now when we click on effect though, and we were gonna um, unlock these, we'll see that uh, this is the initial placement, and you can see it says opacity zero, and then Y, negative 150. So that's why if I change this to opacity one, we're still not gonna see it because on the Y axis, it's at 150. If we hit zero, you'll see it will come back into place. So we could just, um, we could adjust this value until they're both just out of view, like right there. Now it's negative 87, if you can see that. Okay, spring transition right here. This is kind of like the easing and stuff. So you can play around with that at will. And um, I think that's pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and hit play, scroll down. And there we go. We can see because we put replay, it's just gonna keep on coming in. Very fun, very, very cool. If we were to do this like with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript straight up or with a, a, even Greenstock Animation Platform, it would be a long time for us to get to this point. Uh, so we save tremendous amount of time. So you can do the same thing um, with these elements. Go ahead and try to see if you could recreate what we just did. So again, I. You could pause and do that, and if uh, you did, and then you couldn't figure out, here again, here we go. So we hit F for the frame tool. We'll wrap this type all the way inside of a frame. We'll get rid of the fill, and we'll make sure that the overflow is set to hidden, which it is. And at that point, we wanna take flagship, and we wanna put it inside of there, all right? And then we'll take flagship, and we'll add an effect, and again, it'll just be scroll animation. We come over here, we do section and view, it'll be guitar. We'll make this center, replay yes. This will be slide in top. And come over here, opacity is at uh, one. And in this case, Y is too high. So if we just go to like negative 20 for a second. Oh, I still don't see it. So let's see, where is this thing? Hello, where'd you go? Maybe I'll just put zero. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's negative 22, and I think that's it. Yep, so now we'll hit play. We'll scroll down, and you can see both of them come in. Now, you can also do a delay, um, and then if we select this, we go back to animation, and we take a look, I'll zoom up here, We'll see that we have a transition property, we have an easing, we see delay right here. Um, so you could do like a 0.3 uh, second delay or so. Hit play. Now you can see that it's a stagger animation. So that's how you can create stagger based animations within your app. We'll do this one more time uh, just for this section. So this right here will be cool to create a component and do like a hover state where this uh, arrow comes out. We're not gonna mess with that for now, but we'll do this one more time so we can commit it, commit it to me muscle memory. I will hide this and we'll make sure that that is hidden for overflow and it is. We wanna take 
I this frame right here and put it inside the new frame. And at that point, we'll go ahead and click. As you can see, this is just uh, so easy once you understand it, the process. We're gonna do effects of scroll animation, uh, section in view, guitar, center, repeat, yes. Um, preset will be slide in top, unlink those. This goes to 100, this goes to zero, and then we could just move it up and out of the way. There we go. Spring animation will add a 0.6 second delay for this time, uh, which will add another 0.3 from the original. All right, and I think that's probably pretty good right there. Let's hit, uh, let's go down. There we go. I would probably change those to 0.2 and 0.4 so that they come in a little bit faster. And then one final, just real simple animation that doesn't use a mask, like this guitar. If we want this guitar to do something, well, let's just go ahead and take our effects. We'll do scroll animations time, uh, section in view, just guitar, and I guess we'll do that as well. Repeat, slide in top, and this time we'll leave that uh, by default value. So let's see what it does. All right, so that's like pretty fast. I would probably slow that down which you could do with the timing, but there you go. So now what you could do is we could take this, maybe have like two sections of uh, two or three different guitars, and you'll see even though we replicate them, there you go. Now it's a little strange of them coming in and out, so you can adjust those parameters as well within the animation settings of the effects. Awesome stuff.